Hello guys, David Naxer. Welcome to this YouTube videos. And today we're going to talk about how to collect the right market data. You can use it to gain higher winning percentage in your pattern and to have a decent understanding in the general market and in different market cap zones. As I talked about in the previous couple of videos, there's one concept that I talked about many times is the higher the market cap, the more difficult for the stock to create more range in that specific day. So for example, let's say that we have a 100 million market cap. You want it to go up 100%. You only have to input another 100 million into the ticker for it to go up 100%, right? But if you have 1 billion, then the stock requires 1 billion to be input into the stock for it to spike 100%. But that's much more money compared to uh, 100 million. So uh, the higher it goes, it requires more money and more money. That's one of the main reasons higher market cap tends to gain smaller percentages compared to the market cap that's under 500 million. So there's many ways to collect market data. Today, I'm going to give you the most efficient way and the way that I personally use for myself. So first of all, you have to track market cap, flow, uh, stock price by itself, and how much is up by the end of the day, and also what's the maximum gain in percentage during that specific day. So uh, once you have those five terms tracked up, you will need to spread them into three different sections. So first section will be that the market cap is under 100 million. Uh, second section will be 100 million to 500 million. Uh, the last section will be 500 million to 1 billion. There's a fourth section, but normally I don't use at all, is a market cap over 1 billion. So same thing goes into the flow. Uh, 0 to 1 is considered to be a nano flow. 1 million to 3 million is considered to be a very low flow. 3 million to 5 million is low flow. And 5 to 10 is a decent flow and 10 million or above, it's a bigger flow. In terms of flow, you have much more sections compared to market caps, but once you combine them together, then you will have a decent understanding of within each condition that if the market cap is under 100 million, uh, the flow is between zero to one, uh, you know what's the maximum spiking percentage can happen in one day. So once you track enough, you have 100 samples to 150 samples. Then if you see a stock that lands into the market cap between 100 million to 500 million, the flow is 10 million to 20 million. You will have a general idea that in this specific day, according to how much volume is trading in the pre-market, you will be able to predict how much it can spike in terms of gaining percentage in that day. So for example, we have BTX here, we have a, a flow uh, around 20 to 40 million, then we have a market cap under 1 billion. And you can see that it spiked over 60%. So once you track the data for this specific ticker, and you want to filter out in this specific zone that the market cap and flow is in this specific condition, what's the maximum spiking percentage can happen in this uh, flow and market cap zones. Uh, for BTX, I will be instantly know that today, if it decides to get volume, the maximum gaining percentage will be 100% to 200%, right? Now for GME, this is completely different market cap and flow. Uh, the flow is around 40 million. Uh, it did a couple offerings, so it's around 70 million now. And there is much higher market cap, almost 10 times higher than BTX. In this way, the spiking percentage will be much lower compared to uh, BTX in average. Once I track enough samples, I will know that GME average spiking percentage will land anywhere between 20% to 40%. And by tracking the correct market data, you will be able to understand that how much you can spike, how much you can drop, and also you can use that to benefit your risk management method uh, to be able to have a very good risk controls, especially when you are taking and level two entry. So in conclusion, how to really track market data. Uh, most important part, you have to track market cap flow and how much volume is currently be trading, how much percentage gain by the end of the day, and what's the highest percentage can spike during that day. So once you have those five components and make sure separate them into multiple different sections, let's say uh, flow between zero to one and market cap between zero to 100 can be section one, then flow between three to five million and market cap is around zero to 100 million can be section two. So there's going to be a lot of sections, but once you did enough work, uh, you will be able to have a great understanding of how to really uh, measure the percentages and also to know how much you can drop for this specific market cap and flow. 
So one thing that can be useful is to find a credit source uh, that normally STT is not very uh, accurate. So for example, let's say we want to look at the flow for VXRT. You can see that the flow is around 108 million. Uh, market cap is uh, 739. But normally I will use a different source to compare if the flow and market cap is actually accurate. Uh, I will use Yahoo Finance and uh, Finvest to compare if they are the same number. Uh, if they are not, I will go into SEC to check 20F or uh, 10Q to see if they're actually filed uh, any offerings and to actually state um, what's the flow for this specific ticker. By the way, we have our platform StarCraft coming up. Uh, it should be coming out within uh, two months and uh, we are providing much more accurate market cap and flow. And also you can build your own strategy in the platform. So you will be able to generate your equity curve based on your own strategy that you created. So overall, that'll be the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will put a link below if you want to register for the upcoming platform. And uh, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.